So thank thank you very much for uh, you know having me speak. Uh, you know, thanks to the organizer. Um, it's um, it's good to go first while you're all fresh. Um, I it's it's not a lot of time. It's a very 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 packed topic. Um, so I'm going to try to go fast. Um, I'm also going to be try to be very very focused on just the particulars of this court decision. It's a, it's a recent court decision. I was going to speak about both Karadzic and Mladic. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard these names before. Um, and the decisions were really similar. Karadzic had a recent, um, you know, um, uh, you know uh, second decision, which I haven't gone through. And so it's, I'm just going to focus on, on Mladic. Uh, my name is Tarik Bargovac. Um, I am not a legal scholar, nor a lawyer, nor anything like that. I am a Bosnian person. My training is actually in uh, mathematics engineering. I write software, I write code, and so I know something about logic. Um, and, but, but I've always had a very, very high opinion of the legal profession because you know, they, they adjudicate very, very important things, and there's an adversarial spirit, and logic is supposed to win. Um, and so when, when the decisions came for Karadzic and Mladic, um, as a Bosnian person, I knew that, uh-oh, uh, out of order. OK, never mind. Uh, this was supposed to be the second slide. Um, as, a, as a Bosnian person, I, I, I took a look at the verdict and I said, well, OK, great, guilty of genocide, but they've really limited it to a single event one week, a large number of men and boys, captive men and boys killed. Uh, but why, why did they do that? Because we, we knew what was happening much before then. We knew about the killings, and I'll, I'll get into it a little bit. Um, why did they say just guilty of genocide in Srebrenica? Which is great that he's guilty. Um, and, and all of these other long list of war crimes against humanity in all of Bosnia, also guilty, which is great. But why not guilty of genocide in these other towns specifically? when we knew about the massacres, we knew about the motivation of the massacres, and I'll get into that. And why not even charged with genocide in many other towns that, uh, you know, that preceded Srebrenica, uh, in, a, in what is essentially a very, very small country in a conflict that lasted a full three years, where most people, you know, compared to those 8,372, most of the victims happened very early in the war, 1992, in fact, 1993, and not 1995. Um, and so, um, now I have to go back because my slides somehow got out of order. So, um, being first, I thought I should, I should flash this. John said, it's not the best definition. However, this is what the court is supposed to be working from. And for Bosnia, this would be, a, you know, this is, this is, exactly what will happen in Bosnia. And I, I want to highlight some, some great things about this definition as a legal basis for Bosnia. Um, and, um, you know, so uh, genocide means any of the following acts committed with intent to destroy, intent to destroy, or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. It includes killing members of the group, but not just killing members of the group, because it's any one of these, right? So causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent birth within the group, and forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. All of these things happen in Bosnia. Everybody who followed it has seen documentation. It's a very, very well-documented set of events. Um, and, and in fact, what I really like about the definition is that there's, in it, there's very little splitting hairs. So, you know, me as a non-legal scholar, as a lay person, I can, I can see, read this and understand, causing serious harm or preventing births, it means not only killing. Um, the intent, so if, if I intend and I begin to carry it out, it is genocide, right? I don't have to be effective, I don't have to be successful in it, right? Uh, I can be thwarted. In fact, the world is supposed to thwart me, and I have committed genocide, right? Um, so in, in part means no requirement to even intend to kill the entire group, 
right? Even if we take that it's killing what we're doing and only killing, and it's the protected, uh, it, I can just intend to kill part of the group because um, it, that's the message, right? If, if I pick out, you know, a, a portion of a certain community based on the fact that they're within that community, that sends a message to that community, but also to the followers of, of the ideology that I'm espousing. So that's that's genocide, and it's it's really there's nothing there's no other criteria as to what makes an act an act of genocide except the membership in the group that is being targeted. So ordinary people are victims, not special people, not emblematic people, not symbolic people. Ordinary people. Um, so so that's that's what I'm highlighting. And, and so now we look at the verdict again, and, and we say, well, okay, to, to arrive at this decision, this part of the decision, which I'm focusing on, I can, I can talk about many of the other parts, but to, to arrive at this decision, and, and if you read the logic of the, of the argument, they, they're really building a house of cards, which in steps is violating the very uh, definition that it's supposed to be following. And it is as plain as day. You don't have to be a legal scholar. You can read these things and, and see that it is just wrong. I will not talk about why I think this is the case, because I want to focus on the fact I'm convincing you that they have done this. And later we can, we, we can speak what their motivation for doing this is. But it's, it's, it's a major thing in my mind to say that an international court set up in order to legislate genocide has gone and um, gone out of their way to do the opposite. That's why it belongs in this in this conference for genocide denial. Um, so uh, just a, a quick, I mean, I can't paint the picture of the genocide, but a quick couple of points. Um, so this is the, uh, I hate this map. It, 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 you know, it, this is the 1991 census, and these people, the ideologues of genocide and their collaborators, they always like to show these maps of uh, green, green, blue, red, you know, which towns belong to whom, right? Um, and so why am I showing it? Well, I, I just want to highlight some areas in which these ideologues thought these areas are problematic, right? Because because early in the war, these were conquered. so. Uh, this is the Piedor uh, Kaina region. Uh, this is Upper Padrinha, where Sveden says this is lo Lower Padrinha. This is area around Sarajevo. This is the corridor. They, they wanted to establish a corridor to all these great Serb lands. Um, you know, and so these are the lands that they had, they had thought were strategically important to ethnically cleanse, when, that they took over. Uh, initially, because they saw this map and they said, oh, this is a significant map for us, right? We don't like those green areas. And so here are the, here are the areas of the mass graves. They exactly correspond to that. They went to the, they went to the Pieda region because, you know, these are very populous towns, you know, they, uh, that, that were under their control from the beginning of the war, you know? And um, then there is the, this so Srebrenica is actually right here. But this entire region, you know, <coughs> many, many of these mass graves predate the massacre in Srebrenica. Um, so uh, around Sarajevo and, uh, you know, the lower Padrinya region. And this is, I, I don't know which part of the war, I think this is probably, nine, just looking at the map, this is the state on the ground, probably 1994 or early 1995. Uh, so these are, the white are uh, areas under Serb control and the gray are, um, you know, Bosnian and Croat. Oh, by the way, it's a very, very small area. This is 100 kilometers, about 60 miles. So three years, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm talking about Pieda and I'm talking about Sanski Most, that's like five, 10 miles difference. And these are not really separate. You know, these are the same events. Um, 
And here, now we took a look at the concentration camps. This was a very, like a Holocaust style. They, 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 um, they took a lot of pointers from the Holocaust. They had these concentration camps. They would, um, you know, if you take a look, Pieta region had a 28, just in this town, 28 camps that they set up. In Butchko, the, the corridor region, 26 camps. Zvornik, 23. None of these are, all of these predated Srebrenica itself significantly, right? And so how can you look at these facts and, and, and following facts, right? These are from the judgment itself. It has hundreds and hundreds of pages of, of things that were done, actual things that were done, right? These are actually undercounting. They, they, they do this, uh, they do these things, they, they go by, town by town, and they say, how many people are confirmed to have been executed in a mass sense in this, um, you know, in, in a way that really looked like um, it was motivated by ethnicity, religion, and and when they do that, they say, okay, we're being rigorous, but it's actually the counts are much lower compared to the, the full counts of deaths within these these towns. But fine, they're they're being very very rigorous. I, I guess that has value. Um, but but they arrive at these significantly lower counts, which are still fantastically high counts when you're rounding up people based on their ethnicity uh, and, and disappearing them and killing them and torturing them. So how is this, how can this possibly not be genocide? You know, um, so here is, in bold are me paraphrasing or quoting from the decision itself, their rationale as to why these towns were not genocide. Okay. So the physical perpetrators, that means the killing squads, did not move between areas. They had limited geographical control and authority. Right? So in Piedor I had a killing squad, and in Sansky Most I had a killing squad, and in all these other towns I had separate different killing squads. Right? And somehow this is not showing a pattern. It's not showing common cause or coordination. It's the opposite. It's like the court is saying, well, if it had been just one group of people going from place to place to place, it would have shown that it was genocide. But the fact that you are, you are organizing within these towns the local people to execute this is somehow not genocide. Now, if, if you were, I mean, put yourself into the shoes of Mladic, the general we're talking about here. Um, if you were organizing this, this campaign, what you would want to do is you want to put the locals in charge, if you have enough of the locals. You, you form the local squads because they know who is who. It's not apparent who is Bosnia and who is a Serb to an outsider within these towns. Everybody dresses the same at this point. Nobody is particularly religious. You know, they, they use some, some things such as uh, uh, getting men naked to see if they're circumcised because that's a tell. But, you know, you, you want the locals to be executing this, right? Uh, so operationally makes sense. And also these are low-level low, low level butchers. Why would they have authority? What, what you're seeing is that they're operating under impunity. In every one of the towns, nobody is afraid of actually being prosecuted, right? They all get the same idea somehow, and nobody's afraid of being prosecuted. That means that they're told something, right? Uh, so, so that's strongly communication. But now, as a consequence of this decision, well, let's say that I'm committing genocide or planning on genocide. Hey, why don't I just use locals? <laughs> you know, it's... Um, so the Bosnian Muslims targeted each individual municipality, formed a relatively small part of the Bosnian Muslim population, and the Bosnian Serb claimed territory, or in Bosnia and Herzegovina as a whole. This is a nonsense statement. There's a hundred plus municipalities in Bosnia committing a massacre over people. You know, massacring people within one town is not going to, uh, an individual town is not going to be a significant number of the whole number of Bosnians. You know, and what is a significant part? They never define it. They never say, is it 30%? Is it 50%? Is it 50, is it 50 plus one maybe? You know, they never say that. So it's just 
it's an arbitrary thing that they've just said in order to disqualify these towns as being genocide. And then within each of the five towns considered, the murdered Bosnian Muslims did not constitute a significant part of all the Bosnian Muslims within the town. Well, that's debatable, right? Because they've lowered the, the counts. Um, again, unknown arbitrary threshold of significant. But it also gives credit to the perpetrators for all those who managed to run away, right? People knew it was coming. It was happening in the nearby town. And so people took back roads and woods and everything, and they got away. And now we're going to say these guys are not guilty for not having caught them in time. Um, and part of the ethnic cleansing was to force them for, to force them to leave. Horrific atrocities on a, on a part of it to force the others to leave and not come back. So, um, and, and so what, what it really boils down to, this is a logical fallacy. There is no genocide in early to medium stages. <laughs> you know, it doesn't exist. Um, it only is genocide after it's significantly successful and complete. So, hey, do, give your best shot. You don't have to worry about it unless you're successful, right? Um, and so it's, it's like a stopping rule, right? You know, hey, hey what if I just kill 30% here? I'm good, right? It's, um, so, so keeping going. So uh, another another thing that they say in the decision these are these are these are court judges, you know, in the international um, tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast. There. Uh, insufficient evidence that the Bosnian Muslims in each of the above municipalities uh, had a special significance or were emblematic in relation to the protected group as a whole. This is made up. The genocide convention says it's membership of the group, not a special member of the group. But even, even so, they actually practiced decapitation. They made kill lists before they go into a town. And they said, we've got to find these people because these people are significant people. They're lawyers, they are doctors, educators, clergy. And so it actually, they are looking for significant people. I guess the court is looking for a different kind of significant person, which they're not defining for us. So this is a, this is a crazy one. So the JC, Joint Criminal Enterprise Members, Mladic is a, is a member of that, uh, sometimes said that they would exterminate the Muslims, but at other times they said that they would not. And so these, in, in the court's opinion, these actually cancel each other. But, you know, there are dead bodies. And saying that you would exterminate them and there are dead bodies means that you have motive, right? You have, you have, and also, by saying that they should be exterminated, you're giving supporters on the ground green light to do it. So you're, you're affecting it. And then if you say at some other times that you're not interested in it, well, then that's denial. That's self-interest, right? You're just basically simple-minded denial. And therefore, the court, this international court, is entering simple denial as evidence to prove that there's no genocide into the record. Um, and so when you, when, you, when you get to all of this, they do say Srebrenica is a genocide. But why is Srebrenica a genocide? I mean, if you take a look at it, the 8,372 that were murdered in Srebrenica, that's not really a, a significant you know, portion of all of the Bosnians, you know, Bosniaks in the world, right, either, if you, if you want to set a threshold. So how is, why is genocide in Srebrenica a genocide? Well. They're, they, they hear this why they had the symbolism before, right? Well, Srebrenica is symbolic. But why is it symbolic? These are just regular people. In fact, they're regular people who ran away from the uh, original towns that you said were not genocide. Because Srebrenica was smaller than the enclave. You had a lot of refugees in there who were, who were killed in the end. They're symbolic because we just know that they're victims of genocide. This is the most publicized event, so we know, right? So that's circular logic. Um, and also, the world was warning that Srebrenica was going to happen before it happened, you know. And why did the world know? Well, because we saw what happened in the other towns. So Serbs went ahead and did it anyway, thumbing their noses at the, at the world. And we knew it was going to happen because of what happened in the other side. But what happened in the other side? According to the ICTY, that wasn't even genocide. So how is Srebrenica symbolic? Um, 
And then if you, if you take this at face value and you say, well, this is just some made up symbolism, well, that Srebrenica wasn't genocide either. So history is going to take a look at it and say, well, okay, they're just, they're just saying Srebrenica is, I mean, they're not, because the evidence is overwhelming. But this is what the legal status is right now. This is, seems arbitrary. Why is Srebrenica genocide when the other things have been ruled not to be genocide and they're the same thing? Uh, we're, we're applying, we're making sentence a special sometimes. And so this is the end of my slides. I, I do hope to get the question as to why <laughs> from you guys. Um, um, but that's in, in the discussion. That would be my opinion, and you, you're going to ask 100 different people, you're going to get 100 different opinions. I think I have a pretty good one, so I'd like to talk about <laughs> it. But, um, but that's, um, you know, thank you.